accounting equation and Excel. Pay employees. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. In Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just construct your own worksheet as we go or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working in is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically working within a template now, however, we will be adding to the template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. Quick recap, we've been entering our beginning balances into an accounting system populated with the accounting equation. The accounts under the accounting equation in essence acting as our trial balance from which we will construct our major financial statement reports, that being the balance sheet, the income statement, sometimes the income statement being called the profit and loss report. We then enter transactions for the first month of operations. And now we're imagining we're basically at the end of that month of operations. And we're going to be doing the transaction for paying employees. Remembering that paying employees, if it wasn't for government regulations and taxes, would be basically as easy as any other kind of expense that we're paying. It'd be like paying the utility bill, decreasing the checking account, the other side going to expense. However, because of laws and regulations and taxes, payroll is often much more complex of a transaction, so much so that we might have special needs or special software that's going to help us to make sure that we are in compliance. Therefore, it's one of those areas that when we're building our accounting system, we have to think, how are we going to deal with the payroll needs? A couple of ways you might do that. You might say, hey, look, I'm not going to be taking on businesses with payroll. I'll focus on people that are sole proprietorships where I can just automate the whole system, basically be on a cash-based system. Or if you take on the payroll situation, then the question is, do you want to, as the bookkeeper, do it yourself? In which case, you'll probably have to pay for software that you can bill the client for, even within a system like a QuickBooks, because payroll is going to be a step up in terms of pay, for example, in most software like a QuickBooks or a zero and so on. Or you could opt for an external party to do the payroll outside of your accounting system so that they deal with all the external payroll needs and the payroll reporting and uh, so on and so forth. And then we just pull in the information necessary in order to get our financial statements correct for reporting purposes, at the least for tax preparation, if we're in the United States. So just, we wanna keep those things in the back of our, our mind as we go. If we have an external person doing the payroll, we might be able to be more on a cash-based system, even with the use of the payroll, using in essence an adjusting entry process where we, or a CPA or tax preparer at the end of the year, adjusts our accounting system to be on an accrual basis or add the payroll detail that is necessary based on the payroll reports that we receive. All right, keeping those things in mind, uh, we're gonna go to the blank tab over here and think about the payroll. Now we're thinking about it, I'm 
from the United States. So I'm going to think about it with, and it's possibly the United States has a fairly complex set of laws related to pay, payroll because we have federal withholdings. We've got Medicare and all that kind of stuff to deal with. And then we have the state withholdings, which are actually different. However, remember the general concept here, the double entry accounting system is universal across you know, the world. It's, it's like math. And then the things that differ are going to be laws and regulations, which might throw a wrench into, especially if there are taxes involved, our bookkeeping system, which is the case with payroll. So whenever we're looking at different laws and taxes and whatnot, you can usually apply the same kind of tax concepts to different areas. And because there's no new taxes under the sun, it's just a question of which tax is basically being applied. How is it working? If you learn that from other tax systems, you can usually take those concepts and apply them to different basically locations. All right, Gen that's the general outline. So I'm gonna, first we're gonna go all the way to the right and put together a payroll worksheet. This would be a report that would be generated internally in software if we were to construct it with software like a QuickBooks or a zero and pay for the added software or this would be the report that might be done externally by a payroll provider that we would then take and use to adjust our financial statements in accordance with that information to make our financial statements correct so let's i'm going to make a skinny column so i'll take this skinny over here i'm going to go home tab format paint and make a skinny cy this is going to be called a payroll register. I'm just going to call it like a payroll ledger, payroll ledger. And so we're going to process this information out. Now, ultimately, when we process the payroll, we're going to write, in essence, a check form decreasing the checking account. Even if it's an electronic transfer, we still think of it as kind of a check form. But if it was processed in software like a QuickBooks, it would be a special check form called a payroll check, right? And the other side would be dealing with all the other weird stuff that goes on with payroll. So let's say we have gross pay. I'm going to put my headers here, gross pay. I'm going to put it in two separate columns so that when I copy the same format down below, I don't have to widen out my, uh, my cells. So I'll say gross pay. And then we're going to have FIT, which is called federal income tax. We're going to have social security. We're going to have Medicare. And then we're going to have the net income or net check let's call it net payroll check all right and then i'm going to select all of this stuff here make that a header formatting by going to the home tab font group we'll make it black we'll make it the text white we're going to center it uh, alignment and center i'm going to make this payroll ledger bit on this side left aligned again however all right so then we're going to have Adam is one of our employees, Adam Hamilton, Hamilton. I'm not sure if I spelled his last name right now. <laughs> now we're going to get the pay. Now, a couple things with payroll. You can decide when you want to pay people, which might happen weekly. It might happen bi-weekly, semi-monthly, semi-monthly and bi-weekly are not exactly the same, but kind of similar pay periods. And then you have monthly for our purposes, we're gonna pay monthly because I don't wanna be processing payroll four times a week and do the same journal entry over and over in our practice problem. But in practice, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly are possibly the most common cycles that you're pay for payroll. Once you decide that, then the question is, well, how much do you pay per cycle? Obviously, you would agree on that with your employee, agree on the salary or possibly hourly wage and then either track the hour or pay, pay based on a salary basis. So we're just going to imagine that the pay for this month, we've calculated it, we've made an agreement, we've shaken hands, it's going to come out to gross pay of 4583 All right, and then we're going to have the FIT that's going to have to be withheld. Now, the idea in the United States is that we pay an income tax. We, the, the employer, are going to pay an income tax on our side, if we're a sole proprietorship, when we do our Schedule C, if we're a corporation, when we do our corporate tax return, if we're a partnership, it'll flow through to the partnerships when we do the partnership return with the K-1s. But the IRS is also concerned with Adam's taxes. We're paying Adam Hamilton, the employee, and the IRS wants to make sure that they're gonna get their money from Adam. IRS doesn't trust Adam, 
And because they're a small person, he might kind of try to fly under the radar. They want us, the employer, to take the money from Adam before Adam gets his grubby little hands on it. And we have to give it to the government on behalf of Adam, quote, for Adam's own good, end quote, right? For his, we're doing him a favor by doing this. But really, the Irish just obviously wants their money and they know they have more leverage on us. How do they have the leverage on the business? Because they because we're the ones that want the deduction for income tax purposes. So if you're not in the United States, this might sound a little wacky, but the idea is that we we need that we wanted to deduct the expense so the IRS has leverage for that deduction and can force us to be their tax collector. So that means we we're going to take away the, the FIT federal income tax from Adam out of his check before he gets it. How do I get that number? Adam has to provide me the information with a W-4 form, and I'm going to do it in accordance with the W-4 form. So it's still kind of voluntary to some degree on Adam's side, but we're still forced to, you know, take the money out of Adam's checks according to that. Then we have the Social Security. Remember, with Social Security, we have two sides of it. We pay into Social Security in the United States. It's almost acting like a government retirement program, which is kind of weird on the federal side. And then we get a payment from it uh, in uh, our, our elderly years, right? So we're paying into it at this point in time, or Adam is, and we as the employer are forced to make Adam pay into it. So it's going to be that amount times 0.062 is the current rate. And then we have Medicare, which is more like a safety net program, which once again, we're going to force Adam to pay into. It's going to be this times 0.0145. Now it's usually times 0.0145 or 1.45%, but I messed up here in my worksheet and put 00145, which isn't correct, but I'm going to use that number because that's the number that might show up in our bank rec if we do a bank rec part of this practice problem. So just, just practice problem purposes. The net check then is going to be equal to the gross pay minus what we took, the FIT, the Social Security, the Medicare. Now note, this is a simplified version. This is just a general idea. Could have other withholdings, which we might call voluntary withholdings, which the employee might have the option to put money into a 401k plan, put money into uh, health care and so on and so forth. And we could have state taxes, which will be dependent upon the state that we're in within the United States system. So it gets quite complex uh, and software really helps. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, even with a couple employees, I wouldn't even recommend not using software, <laughs> try to do it manually completely, right? But we wanna see how it's done manually so we can po populate the software and see when problems happen. So same with, we're going to say Erica Smith gets paid 2,400 FIT, which would be calculated from the W-4 that she provides to us. We're just going to imagine it's 360. Social Security is going to be 2,400 times 0 0.062, 6.2%. That's her portion of it. Medicare is going to be the 2,400 times 0 0.0145, 1.5%. 1 up per 1.45 percent which we calculated correctly this time so what is she going to actually get in her check it's going to be 2400 minus 360 minus 149 minus 35 so she's going to get a check of 1856 she earned 2400 she's going to say you ripped me off you only gave me 1856 see how crooked the capitalistic companies are, they don't even pay me the full amount. And that's why the sneaky IRS did it, I think. The sneaky IRS is like, yeah, those evil, evil bosses over there took all your money. It's like, no, we have to give it to the government. It's the government that not only did the government take your money, but they forced me. They forced me to take your money and then give it to them. I'm not the bad guy here. And, and the IRS is like, yes, he is. The, business is the bad guy we're the good guy we're going to give you a little bit of a refund at the end of the year <laughs> then we'll sum this up those sneaky sons of anyway let's copy this thing across so we'll sum it up across put an underline over here home tab font group underline so we can double check this number then by by calculating it this way now i can imagine all of our employees as like their one employee this way so notice that if we did this 
in our QuickBooks system and use like QuickBooks or or zero to populate this, I would have to calculate all of these things individually per employee, per paycheck, so that I can so that I can properly populate the pay stubs that I have to give to them, as well as properly populate the uh, quarterly reporting I need to do, which are gonna be form 941 forms, 940s at the end of the year, W2s and W3s. So this adds a huge amount of data that we have to track within the system to properly do the reporting for payroll. However, if this was done by a third party person and we just needed to pull in the balance to get the financial statements correct and they're gonna do all the other reporting and all that kind of payroll stuff as their specialty, then we can kind of treat all of the employees as though they're one employee and then do the gross pay. So, so our journal entry would be gross pay FIT, Social Security, Medicare. Simplifies a lot of the data, takes a lot of the crazy data out of our system. So a couple things just to keep in mind, even if you're processing payroll within like an accounting system. So then we're gonna say this is the employer. So we're not done yet. You think we're done? No, I don't think so. Then we've got the employer taxes that we have. Let's pull this down here. I'm gonna put it down. Oh, wait a sec. Employer tax. So they're going to have now we're going to have to match Social Security and Medicare and we're going to have to match uh, Medicare and then we probably have FI FUTA FUTA tax Federal Unemployment Tax Act people love when I say FUTA so it's FUTA man that's what they call it so let's put some black and white here we're going to say this is going to be home tab font group black white some of my most popular YouTube videos were named FUTA tax for reasons that have nothing to do with accounting. Apparently, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what in the world, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to match it here. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to Adam. We'll bring this down. So we're not going to have to pay any federal income tax on their behalf, but we're going to have to pay federal income tax on our behalf. But we are going to have to pay and match social security and medicare now this is really strange because they tried to make it look kind of like a 401k plan right because they're saying look these people are putting money into the social security on their end and we're going to force you to match it so what does that mean it means we're basically paying a tax not an income tax not on our income net income of the corporation or sole proprietorship but rather on the income of the employee which is an expense to us right so the higher the expense goes up the more tax that we have to pay on the expense which is a little strange but that's how it works man that's how we do it over here so we're going to copy that down and then we're going to say then uh the net check is going to be equal to the sum uh, this is going to be the total. We're not quite writing the check yet, but we're processing the payroll, which is going to increase the liability and we're going to have to write that check. So this is what we're going to have to pay for the employees over and above what we agreed to pay them for their actual payroll. Let's sum this up. Sum this up. We'll copy this across. We'll double check it this way because it's summing vertically. Let's sum it horizontally to make give us a double check number okay so then what does that mean then that means that we have payroll liability so once we process this thing we're only going to give them this amount of money and then we're going to have withheld this amount of money and incurred a liability of this amount of money which we're going to record into a liability account which means that payroll is forcing us to do an accrual type of thing uh, generally, although there's kind of a workaround that we could still stay in it. So let's copy this down here. This is going to be Social Security and Medicare and then total. So that means let's make this black and white header again. Home tab, font group, black, white, center. I like to have this one left aligned though. Left aligned. So we'll bring down once again Adam and Erica. Adam and Erica down here. You guys are, you better do some good work because the government's making me pay a lot of money and do a lot of hassle for you people. Okay, I just want you to know that. And so then we're gonna copy. So this is gonna be equal to social security. 
plus uh, uh, our portion of Social Security. We'll copy that down. We'll copy that across. Medicare is the same. So we're copying the two Medicare. So that means the total liability that's going to be incurred is going to be this for Adam. It's going to be this for Erica. Summing up this way, we're going to get FIT 1080, Social Security and Medicare. We'll total it up this way. Give another, once again, double check number on this side. Boom. boom. Okay. So that means that we're going to actually pay them this amount. Then we're going to incur this liability and take this money out of their check, which we're going to have to pay to the government this amount on their behalf. This amount is our liability that we incurred because we incurred an expense of paying the employees, which is weird. And then that's going to give us this amount that's going to be a liability, which we could put into separate liability accounts for FIT, Social Security, and Medicare, or possibly just one account called payroll liability, which we'll then have to write a check from to pay the government for the payroll liability. All right, so we'll do this with an accounting equation, but let's look at it in terms of like a journal entry because sometimes this is easier to see with a journal entry and then we'll convert that into the accounting equation. So I'm gonna select this whole thing. Let's make this blue and bordered before we get ahead of ourselves. Wait for yourself. Wait for yourself. Look at yourself as back there left in the dust crying. You're getting ahead of yourself. But I hate waiting for myself. I'm so, myself is so slow. You need to wait for yourself. Okay, don't get ahead of yourself. All right. So, okay, are we ready now? Can we go now? All right, let's do the next bit. So now we're gonna make a skinny DG column. We'll make us take this skinny home tab, format paint the skinny, and we'll paste that over here. All right, so here's the journal entries that happen. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna imagine that we'll do two separate checks for Adam and Erica. Now remember, if this was done by an external software, I could write one total amount for all of them. However, the problem with that is that when I actually get to the checking account, uh, it's going to be two separate checks that hit the checking account. So I'll have a reconciliation problem. That might not be an issue. Uh, and I might just say, why don't I could transfer my money to a separate uh, payroll checking account just to make sure that I can match that out as easily as possible. Sometimes companies will do that. They will transfer money from their checking account to the payroll account and then process the payroll from the payroll account so they can see all of the activity going in and out of one checking account. And if there's a problem, it's easier to figure out as opposed to paying out of your normal checking account where you have all this other activity that's kind of happening. That's just something to keep in mind. But uh, we'll do, let me do two journal entries here. And then, so let's see what that would look like. So for Adam, we're gonna say that we paid Adam it would be like payroll expense and let's do debits and credits here so if you don't know debits and credits that's okay we'll convert it to the accounting equation credits but let's see this is why debits and credits come into play it's easier to do a complex transaction like this actually with debits and credits but we can still see it in terms of a journal entry either way so we're going to say we're going to pay adam four thousand five eighty three Okay, and then we're gonna have, but but the check that Adam's gonna get, let's put that down here. Well, let's put it here. Payroll, uh, let's just put cash. From the checking account is only gonna be this amount, which I'm gonna put a negative for the credit. What, not that amount, <laughs> sorry, it's this amount. So the difference is gonna be payroll liability. So you see how we're in balance here? I can calculate this as the negative sum of these, or I can say that should be the same as negative sum of what we took out of the paycheck, FIT, Social Security, and Medicare. So this should be in balance, debits equaling the credits, that should add up to zero. All right, so then for, for Erica, same thing, I'm gonna have the same format, and we could just copy this down and go do 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 do. We're gonna have payroll expense, she earned 2,400, but we're only going to pay her 
1850, the difference, negative sum, is 544, which I can also calculate by saying that's what we took out of her paycheck, FIT, Social Security, Medicare, that puts us in balance. And then we're going to have our portion of the payroll liability, which I'm going to put as payroll tax expense, which I'm just going to put as a total. I could put for the two of them, but I'm just going to put the total here. And then once again, payroll liability at 474. So the payroll liability is going to go up by this, this, and this, which adds up to 2029. 2029. So there it is in terms of like debits and credits. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing uh, with with basically a uh, a journal, a <laughs> accounting equation format. All right, so let's do that. So I'm going to go, well, let's make this like blue and bordered first. Make this nice. Getting ahead of yourself. Make this blue and bordered. We'll make this a header black and white okay we could center this too that needs to be centered hold on that needs to be in the center all right let's go all the way to the left and then we're going to go back down and record this with uh the accounting equation formatting so we'll scroll all the way down here man we got a lot of stuff happening so we're down here on line 101 101 i think i feel like we should celebrate that we hit line 100 we hit line 100 <laughs> well it's great all right anyways we're gonna pay uh pay the employees and we're just gonna say pay employees we have adam hamilton and erica smith and then we're gonna have the employer payroll tax expense. All right, so let's calculate this out. So I'm gonna go over what's gonna happen. Well, the net check, I'm just gonna pull this information from the worksheet. I'm gonna do a lot of scrolling to do that, so I apologize, but the net check is just gonna go down, negative. I'm gonna scroll all the way up and then scroll all the way to the right to look at the check from our worksheet which was right here. Adam is actually going to get paid 3572 Okay. And then, but Adam's expense over here is going to be payroll expense is going to be equal to what Adam earned before we took out the money. So equals all the way up to the top, going to the right. And Adam earned this amount. The difference is going to be these amounts, which I'll sum up as payroll liability. So that's the expense decreasing the equity side. So I should put a negative, negative. And then the liability is going to be payroll, uh, payroll liability, which I don't have yet. Let me see where I want to put that payroll liability. Let's put it in between these two. So I'm going to put my cursor on column X right click and insert and i'm just going to call this payroll pay roll oh wait a second that's not right payroll liability now it's got a capital i no no okay and then i'm going to scroll down and where does this go what line am i on here we are payroll liability on x102 equals the sum brackets scrolling up to the top scrolling to the right and then i'm going to sum up what we took out of adam's check fit social security and medicare all right so now let's see if that keeps us in balance over here so if i go on over and copy this down does that keep us in balance to do it? copy it down that red does that red turn green moment of truth truth it is working let's put some zeros across the board before we do the next one just so we can see where everything is lining up control z zeros across the board all right okay so now let's do the next one 
Erica, same thing. Cash is going down, negative. Let's see what the actual paycheck that's going to hit our checking account will be. We're going to go on over and say, what hits the checking account? What hits the checking account? It's going to be that 1856. All right, but Erica actually earned on the payroll liability, negative. Erica earned, scrolling all the way up, all the way to the right, this amount, 2,400, but we had to take out of her check, FIT, Social Security, Medicare, not because we wanted to, they made us do it, Erica. I'm telling you, why did you, why did you, I can't pay my rent with this paycheck. I, it's not our fault, Erica. They made us do it. The government made us do it. I'm going to scroll up. That's not what they say. They say that they're the nice guys and they're going to give me a refund at the end. And you took my money. They made me take your money, Erica. I'm telling you, they made me do it. And then we're going <laughs> to sum this up. Dead. All right, we'll put some zeros across the board. Okay. Zeros across the board. All right. And then we've got our employer tag. Let's copy this down to see if we're in balance. Copy this down. Copy this down. And then we'll copy this down. And then we're going to sit. Now we're going to do our payroll tax. This is the tax over and above that doesn't have any cash impacted because we haven't paid it yet, but we incurred an added liability over and above the payroll expense for the taxes we're going to have to pay. So that's also going to go into payroll liabilities. I'm just going to do it as one lump sum. This is going to be equal scrolling all the way up to the top. This is going to be the Social Security, the Medicare. It would include FUTA, federal unemployment tax, and possibly some state taxes in practice. But I don't want to get into, into the weeds too much. So it's just going to be the 474. So we're going to owe that as well. And then the payroll expense is just going to be actually not payroll expense. Let's put payroll taxes next to it. So we have the payroll expense right next to it. I'm going to put payroll taxes. So I'm going to select column AK, right click, insert, and then this is going to be payroll taxes. Now you might say, hey, look, I already have payroll taxes. Why, why didn't I put payroll taxes like part of this 2,400 you took out of my paycheck and paid for federal income tax, social security, and Medicare? And that's true, but that's not payroll taxes to us. That's payroll taxes to Erica and Hamilton, Erica and Adam, that we had to just take out of their check is the idea. These are payroll taxes that we had to not take out of their check. We had to pay over and above what we agreed to pay them. Uh, and that's why they're, they're separate in payroll taxes. That con that's always confusing. People don't understand that, okay? So if you understand that, you could really help out uh, in a lot of bookkeeping systems. So let's go ahead and add this across or put the zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Let's put an underline under this one. Underline. Let's put an underline under this one. Let's put an underline under this one. Boom. Let's copy down our formulas to see if that should keep us in balance. Is that keeping us in balance? Boom. All right, let's bring down the balance now. Bring down the balance. So we're going to sum this up. This equals the SUM of the last balance, 94,050 minus the two paychecks that we sent out. We didn't have we haven't yet paid out any of the liabilities. Let's copy that and then paste it across the board, pasting it with just the formula, pasting it with the formula, pasting it with just the form you lies to do. All right. Okay. So there we have it. And let's copy this down to see if we are still in balance with the balance. 
copy this down, copy this down, and that green should turn red. Let's put an underline under here, home tab, font group, underline. So there we have it. Now note that we looked at some other items where we had subsidiary ledgers like accounts receivable and accounts payable uh, or inventory and then accounts payable. Now the subsidiary ledger, you can kind of think of the payroll reports as a subsidiary ledger for payroll because they're going to give us the information we need to kind of support this uh, payroll liability, which could include what we owe to the federal government in the United States, to the state governments, and then possibly to other voluntary providers like a 401k plan or um, medical plan, Medicare, or I'm sorry, uh, just insurance or something like that. Uh, but the payroll reports are, are going to be more complex because, again, you have to break them out per employee, per paycheck, be able to track not only the current balance that is due, but the year to date information as well as the current date information to populate the paycheck stubs that are going to go out per employee, as well as track the information once again necessary to then populate the information reporting to the government in the form of 940s on a quarterly basis, typically 941 yearly at the end of the year, typically, as well as the W-2s and W-3 forms sent out not only to the employees, but also to uh, the government. So we have to have all those things should line up and should give us the supporting information, not only about payroll liability, but also about the, the payroll expense and the payroll taxes that are we are reporting, remembering that at the end of the year in the United States, we have to give an income tax uh, report, which is basically our income statement in tax format to the government and we have to report to them the 941s for payroll, the 940 for payroll, and the W-2s and W-3s for payroll. We should be able to reconcile those things, right? So that's why it becomes, you know, important. If we send something into the government that has, like, the W-3s don't add up to what's on an expense, on they should be able to kind of figure that out, even though they're different departments that might have got those two different forms, it all went to the government so they have enough information to say, hey, something's wrong here because there's a substantial difference between what you reported on the W-3s for payroll expense and what you reported as a deduction on your Form 1040. So that's why uh, the subledgers become more complex, which we could generate them internally within the software of like a QuickBooks, but it takes a lot more information to account for all of the detail that we have to put in the reporting per student, per, per employee and so on, or we can have that subsidiary information processed externally by the payroll provider, the large ones in the United States, or being like an a, uh, paychecks or an, an ADP, in which case they hopefully will provide all that added detail and information to support what we have. And then we can just take that information and put it into the system in a similar way as we discussed with like the the furniture and fixture, in which case it has a subsidiary ledger listing out all the furniture and fixture. But oftentimes in the United States, we don't attract that subsidiary ledger in the software because the tax software is going to have to calculate it anyways. So to duplicate such a complicated form in two softwares independently might not be the best idea oftentimes, but rather we depend on the, so the tax software to do the tax calculation and then possibly a separate book depreciation uh, for for us, but we we and then we just adjust our books basically periodically based on that information. Kind of similar uh, type of system. And if we do that with payroll, then we might, in essence, be able to still do payroll kind of on a cash based system, just recording payroll expense when the net check clears the bank account, and then make periodic adjustments to it ourselves or by our tax preparer or, or CPA firm at the end of the year, which again, might be a way to streamline the two processes that need to happen, making the bookkeeping as clean, as efficient, as automated as possible, but still being able to do that period end adjustment to bring in any accrual components that are necessary, as well as make sure that the information on our income statement ties out to the payroll reporting that were given to uh, the IRS with the help and use of payroll reports 
and the payroll tax returns.